Let's talk a little bit about root. In Linux, there are two roots. There's the root user and the root directory. There's also the root home, but let's not talk about that for now so we don't confuse ourselves. For now, what I want to talk about is the root user. In all Linux systems, particularly in Kali as well, by default, the root user is active and you log in as the root user. And as you can see here, this is the username that I've logged in. We also saw that under the power button. This here indicates that I'm logged in as the root user in Kali. You can also tell that you are the root user. Remember when we talked about this a little bit earlier? We said this indicates that you are the root user. What this means is that you are the super user. That you can do anything to your system. Now this is super important for you to recognize because as a super user, issuing some wrong commands could cause a great deal of damage and you'll end up having to rebuild your system from scratch sometimes. So be careful when you're issuing commands as root. Usually, in production environments at work or at home, or when you're connected to the internet, you don't want to be running as root because anything that gets executed in your system will be executed as root, which means it will have access to anything it wants. So for example, let's say you accidentally download a virus or a malware and you execute it as root, that will give the virus root privileges, meaning that the virus, when it runs, it will run as root and it will have unlimited, unrestricted access to anything in your system. While on the other hand, if you're logged in as a regular user that does not have super admin powers and you run that virus, the virus might break and it might not be able to access the files that it needs access to. So because this is a super important user, the first thing you want to do is change the default password. And the way you do that is by issuing the passwd command. It will ask you to enter a new password and to retype the new password. Once done, it tells you that the password has been updated successfully. I'm going to close that for now because I want to talk to you a little bit about directory structures. Now that you know what the root user is, let's see what the root directory is. I'm going to go to places and to computer. Let me move this down a little bit. Right. This here, where I can see everything, is called the root directory. And this is the main directory or the trunk of the tree, if you will, that anything else branches out from. Under the root directory, I have different directories such as the bin, etc, home, and so on. Let's talk about those for a bit. The bin directory, bin stands for binary, which means it has all the user binaries in it. So all the programs that I can run as a user are here, including the bash, the copy, the cat, the grep, and so on. All of these are commands that we're going to be looking at throughout this course. The etc directory is where we have the configuration files. So for example, later on in the course, we're going to be configuring the SSH server. So if I type SSH, I can access the SSH folder. And this is the file that we're going to be configuring later on, or we're going to be changing later on. The home directory is where I would have different folders for different users on the system. I've already created a couple of users so you can see what it looks like. I have two users on the system in addition to root, Fluff and Tom. Usually these users will have their files in separate home directories. This is Tom's home and this is Fluff's home, the other user. The sbin folder would have the system binaries. So we saw the bin folder which had the binaries for the user. These are the system binaries. And these are binaries that you usually use to reconfigure the system or do things that would need root access or admin access. Regular users without the admin privileges will not be able to run these binaries here. The temp, as the name says, will contain temp folders and temp files. You can use that when you're working on something temporarily that you want to ignore later on that you really don't care about. You just dump it in the temp folder get the work done and then forget about it. Later on, you can come and delete it. And last but not least is the root home directory. I don't know if you've noticed or you thought about this. When we went to the home folder, we only saw home for two users. 
However, we know for a fact that the system has more than two users. We know that the user root exists, but there is no root home here. That is separate on its own and it's here. This is the root home. You can see the home icon on it. And this is where I have my documents, desktop, and so on. This folder is not accessible by other users. Unless they have root privileges, they cannot access this folder. So to recap, what I'd like you to keep in mind is a number of things. Number one, there's a root user. Number two, there's a root directory, which has all the other directories branching out of it. And number three, we have the root home. It might sound a bit confusing for now, but you'll get used to it much faster than you think. So whenever throughout this course I'm saying root, you just assume that this is the root user that I'm talking about, unless I specify root home or root directory. If I say root home, that means I'm talking about this folder here, which has everything else under it that belongs to root, roots documents, roots downloads, roots videos, and so on. And when I say the root directory, that means this directory that has everything else branching out from it. Again, root user, root home, and root directory. That's all for this section. Let's move on to the next section and explore together some of the most common commands that we will be using day-to-day -day on Linux.